Hi everybody. Today I'm going to share with you a synchronous looping environment that I developed for Super Collider. It's a sort of a tempo or beat based looping environment where you can have multiple loops going and uh, they all stay synchronized with one another. The model I, I chose for this environment is a master and slave loop paradigm. So there's one sort of master loop sort of controlling everything and the slave loops all take their data from that master loop and that's how they stay consistent with one another. Uh, I'm going to do a brief intro here, and I'll, I'm going to try to some, do some uh, live coding for you guys, and then at the end I'll attempt some sort of musical demonstration. You know, hopefully it'll turn out all right. There are six components uh, uh, to this, this environment, six synths, and they're organized in a specific order on the server. And these synths pass audio and control rate data between each other in order to determine things like a number of beats, where the downbeat is, uh, how long the master loop is, and, and so on. Uh, at the very beginning and at the very end, there's an input synth and an output synth. And uh, they sandwich the remaining four synths. And it's just a convenient way to start with you know all your audio, your input audio, and it goes through some chain of events and you end up with you know everything all in the same place and you can write it to your audio hardware. Uh, the other four, there's a, a synth for recording the master loop a synth for recording slave loops, there's a synth for playing back the master loop, and a synth for playing back slave loops. Uh, the record synths uh, are first, and they're a little bit simpler than the playback synths. Um, the master record sends uh, timer data. It sends uh, an amount of time in seconds on a bus, um, specifically between a start and a stop trigger. And that's used to determine the master loop length when it starts playing back. And the slave record is even simpler than that. It doesn't send any timer data. The playback synths are a little more complicated, but uh, the gist is um, the, the master playback grabs timer data from the record synth through uh, buses and uses an attack threshold to determine where it should start. And the timer data determines the endpoint. And there's also an impulse generator, which um, sends beat data, which helps synchronize the slaves. And the slave playback synth uh, takes various data from the master loop playback, which is right before it in the node chain. Um, downbeats, number of bars, master loop length. And uh, there are some user-specified arguments as well, like uh, how long the slave loop is proportional to the master loop, and a delay time in case the slave loop doesn't start on a downbeat. And it uses this data to synchronize with the master loop. Um, and so because the slave lengths are based on the master length, the loops never go out of sync. And so the only factor that has any bearing on the synchronization is the accuracy of the performer. The more accurately the performer plays, the better the loops will stay in, in sync with each other. Um, so this creates kind of a flexible environment for tempo-oriented loops, and it's not really confined to a particular tempo or style, and the only realistic limit is the CPU. So um, anyway, let's get started. Um, the first thing we want to do is just name that server and boot it. We'll get back to that in a second. And we want to allocate a bunch of buffers. And the three arguments we need are server, number of frames, and number of channels. So I'm just going to make these arbitrarily long. 30 seconds, sample rate times 30, make these two channels, and just quickly copy and paste these. I have eight, why not? It's a good number. Okay, so once we run this, we'll have eight 30 second buffers to play with. Um, okay, and then let's start making our synth defs. Um, so first we have input. Uh, this is a pretty simple one. We just uh, need um, some arguments. Amplitude and then just let's see a bus to send the uh, looping data and then we'll also make a bus to send it directly to the output synth. That way, 
as long as, as even if we just have the input and the output on the server and that's it we'll still be able to hear what's coming through a couple of variables input signal to be recorded and a signal to be sent directly through let's see so input is just the sound in and I'm gonna turn a mono signal into a stereo signal using multi-channel expansion because I've got my guitar plugged in and it's just a mono signal so I'm gonna take that channel the zeroth channel and have it come out of the left and right speakers and we're just defining our two signals to be passed through the chain and we're going to write these out to the record bus and oops, the direct bus and that's pretty much all we need for this one oops okay good so let's make the uh, master record sin. okay let's make some arguments let's get some more room down here okay these arguments will be used to start and stop recording and actually let me just pause for one second and if you don't know this trick it's really useful if you preface an argument with t underscore it um, it acts like a trigger instead of a regular argument and I, I figured this out in, uh, at, at some point on the uh, thanks to the kind people on the super collider listserv and um, really saved me a lot of time because I was making arguments and using them as triggers by setting them to one and then I'd have to reset them to zero and if you have t underscore argument name it takes care of that for you Basically right here, I'll enlarge this, and uh, this is the synth def help file. Arguments that begin with t underscore will be made as a trig control. Setting the argument will create a control rate impulse at the set value. This is useful for triggers, and it sure is. So we'll see those. Those are very useful arguments, and we'll come to those later. Um, we need to make some, some bus numbers, bus indices to send data around Let's see the some of these I won't even end up using they're just sort of useful to have just in case and we need which buff we need an argument to specify which buffer we're going to record into some variables input whether the synth is recording or not, and the timer. So we can send some timer data. Um, okay, so is recording. I'm going to use set reset flip flop at the control rate. Um, and I'm going to use this to determine whether the record buff is recording or not. So you can look at the help file for this if you want. But essentially, set reset. Uh, once it receives a trigger at, at its first argument, it uh, it's by default it's zero. But then when it gets this trigger, it, it sets to one, and subsequent triggers don't have any effect until it receives a trigger here, and it goes back to zero. And so I'm going to use this binary unit generator to uh, start and stop a uh, record buff. Uh, our input. on the in bus which is bus um, it's going to be bus 50 by default two channels and our timer and I'm adding these two triggers because I want a trigger at either of these arguments to um, activate timer to have it output a fresh time data piece of time data so when it gets a start trigger or a stop trigger it'll output the time between these two. So what I really care about is I'm going to hit that start trigger, start recording, hit that stop trigger, and um, that'll send accurate time data.
and we're going to send that timer data out on the timer bus. And then, finally, most important step, we're going to actually record. And let's see, input signal, we're going to record into whichever buffer we specify, offset zeroth frame, just some default values here, and here's our is recording variable, and that's pretty much all we need. Okay, actually let me uh, run some of this stuff, make sure uh, I've got everything here, make sure there are no errors. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Next, slave record synth. Um, for arguments, sort of the same stuff. Um, same input bus. Similar, except this time we don't actually need timer data because the slave records don't care about that stuff. That's all determined later on in the node chain. Same thing. Same thing here as well. And then all we got to do is record. Okay, it's sort of the tricky ones here. Master playback. Rate, number of bars. I'm going to default this to 12 because I'm going to attempt some 12 bar blues at the end of this. Uh, buffer, amplitude, attack threshold. More on that later. Mm. It's got to get this timer data from the uh, record synths. And the master playback synth is actually going to send some data out itself to the slave playbacks. bunch of variables here. Signal, a trigger, jump to the start position, start and length. Okay, so um, right, these a lot of these variables will actually pass down the chain and they'll be used for determining length and synchronizing and things like that. So let's pull that timer data, it's control rate bus. So now we can use the timer data from the record synth in our master playback synth. And this is a precautionary measure. We're going to use the modulo operator and mod, uh, mod the value by um, the length of one of the buffers in seconds. And this ensures that we won't overshoot the um, the timer like if if you record for more than thirty seconds, we don't want to get like a thirty one or thirty two seconds because that's going to be inconsistent with the length of the buffers. So we're just going to wrap it back around. So if we get thirty one seconds, we'll actually get one second. Uh, that looks good. Um, right. So let's determine the start. 
position in the buffer. We want to find the part where the sound started, where the performer started playing. And to do that, we're going to use index in between, which, uh, and again, you can look at the help file, it takes a buffer and a value, and it returns the first index in the buffer where that value lies between the values at two adjacent indices in the buffer. So when you allocate a buffer, they're all zeros at first, but after you record into it, you can use index in between to find the index where the sound begins, or at the very least, get extremely close to it. And, you know, we always run the risk of false attacks or no attacks, but as long as we set the attack threshold value properly, we usually don't have to worry about this. And I've, I found that um, 0 0.02 works pretty well, which I've, I've used up here. So here's our index in between. The control rate is fine. And we need to divide by two for a two-channel buffer because uh, the number of samples in a super collider buffer equals the number of channels multiplied by the number of frames. So this gives us the uh, accurate start frame. And uh, we want to do, uh, again, we need to modify this value a little bit. Index in between will actually uh, return fractional indices. And so we take the floor of that output, just we chop off the decimal part because we don't want a fractional index, we just want a, an integer index. And um, taking the threshold uh, with the, the binary operator thresh with zero as the second argument ensures that we won't get negative uh, index values because that, that'll screw things up as well. Um, the end point is simply timer data multiplied by the sample rate in order to convert to samples because timer is in seconds and we want samples because start is in samples. And length, as well you might expect, is end minus start. And so now we're going to send this length data out and um, we're going to use that for the uh, slave buffers. Okay, what's next? Uh, we're going to make an impulse generator which sends a trigger on every downbeat. Um, so the number of bars is user specified and we're going to convert that to samples and uh, divide by the length in samples. So let's let's do this. Control rate is fine. So, uh, right, number of bars times the sample rate divided by length. And it looks a little confusing, but for example, if we specify, let's say, a four bar loop at 44, 100 sample rate, and then we have, say, a 10 second usable buffer segment, then uh, we'd have 176,400 divided by 441,000, which would be 0.4 hertz. And so in a 10 second loop, we'd have a downbeat every 2.5 seconds, since it's four measures long. And uh, oops. we're going to set our variable number of bars equal to the argument number of bars so we can use it. And now I want something which will trigger the begin. We'll send a trigger on the, the beginning of the uh, of the loop. So I'm going to use pulse divider and divide by the number of bars and start on the final bar. That's why I'm using number of bars minus one. So buff start will send an impulse at the very beginning. When, whereas downbeat sends every downbeat, buff start will send one at the very beginning and only then. All right, and we're going to use buff start to uh, create a, an audio rate index into the buffer. And to do that, we're going to use sweep. This is pretty much, uh, this, this is a fairly easy way to do this. Sweep is just a simple linear ramp, a triggerable linear ramp. Um, and uh, so buff start will trigger at the start. And uh, we want to run at a rate of samples per second. And so all we need to do is set the second argument to the sample rate. Oh, and we also want to offset by the start position. 
and we're going to use this uh, index into the buffer using a buff read object. Here's our index, interpolation, all that good stuff. Multiplied by amplitude, you know, just just in case. And the last thing we want to do is send out all this wonderful data we've collected. Finally, our actual audio. Okay, let's see if we got any errors. All right, excellent. Okay, almost there. Slave playback. Um, similar in some ways but different in some ways as well. Length multiplier, that is gonna be a user specified argument which determines the proportions of the slave to the master. And by default, it's just one, which means it's the same length, but we can change that. A delay time in case it doesn't start on the downbeat. We need an attack threshold again. Amplitude. Okay, those are our arguments. master length and slave length. Okay, we'll get to all those soon. First, we need the uh, master length. And then we're gonna use that to determine the length of the slave. like that. Multiply it by the length multiplier. Pretty straightforward. Pull the downbeat and number of bars information. Mm. Okay, start position. This is pretty much the same stuff as the master playback synth. Again, we have to divide by two. And there's, uh, here it's just start plus length. We've got the length, we've got the start position, that gives us enough information for the end. Okay, so we're making something called sync, uh, which is, we're going to have a, a method for synchronizing the slaves with the master loop, and we're going to use set reset flip flop again. And the uh, trigger to uh, synchronize is going to be a downbeat, and we uh, have downbeat data which we're pulling from the uh, downbeat bus, which we're getting from the master playback synth. And we don't need a, a means to reset this because we just need to synchronize it once. And so we're going to use this uh, sync to trigger an envelope which uh, jumps to the start position of the slave buffer. Going to use a ADSR envelope. And sync is going to be our trigger. Let's see, is that right? Looks good to me. Okay. 
Uh, we'll come back to that in a second, but now let's make the delay times. So we're going to calculate the usable data to, we're going to calculate usable data which we can use to delay the slave loop in case the loop begins on something other than the downbeat. So um, first we'll calculate the length in seconds of a single measure. divided by the number of bars. So this is the, uh, the length of the master loop. We convert that to seconds by dividing by sample rate and divide by the number of bars to give us the, length, the, the time in seconds of a single bar. And then we're going to multiply that by the user specified delay argument. And we'll see how that's used later. Okay, and now this part's a little tricky. We, let's see, so we want, um, we need an audio rate index into the buffer, just like we did with the master playback synth. And we're going to use phaser this time instead of sweep. And phaser begins automatically. So we need to start with a static index, that something that just sits at zero and waits for a downbeat. Uh, and then it will switch to the phaser and simultaneously trigger the phaser to jump to its start position. So we're going to use a select uh, unit generator. And the, uh, the zeroth index is going to be uh, silent.air, which is just going to spit out audio rate zeros. And we're going to have our phaser as the other element of this array. All right. Um, you need to proper uh, rate. Okay, you can look up the phaser help file, and you can see I'm using start and end, and start is the uh, the uh, start position, which we jump to when it gets a trigger. So um, let's see. Where, oh yeah. So I mean, this is actually the second argument. So uh, select needs a trigger to determine which index it's going to use, and that trigger is going to be sync, which is uh, just will be one whenever we get a downbeat. So whenever select receives a downbeat with this trigger here, it will jump from the zeroth index to the first index, and it will simultaneously re-trigger the phaser, because jump trig is triggered by sync. Um, right, did I forget anything? No. And then use this index to read through the buffer. And then we're going to use the delay line with no interpolation to delay the signal. We're going to make a maximum delay time of 2. And then multiply by the amplitude just for good measure. And send it out. And the moment of truth. JTRIG, not defined. Ah, I said JTRIG, I meant T jump. Perfect. And last but not least, our output synth. So there's our signal going through the loops. We 
direct signal. Add them together. And I think we're done. So let's run them all together, see if we get any error messages. Okay. Hopefully I did everything right. Um, we're going to make some groups because groups ensure that the synths will be placed on the server in the correct order so that they can read the uh, bus data which is being passed amongst themselves. The in group is first and the record group comes next. Then the uh, master playback group. Slave group. And the output. And I'm also going to make um, a function called setup, um, which I'm going to register as a command period object. That way, whenever I hit command period, it'll terminate signal processing, but also it'll set up whatever we need for if we want to just try this again. It's very useful, you'll see. All right, first, the thing we want to do is uh, see, zero all the buffers. Oops. Wait time. Uh, set up. I'll just copy and paste this. Actually, we're just going to set up these groups again. And we're actually going to instantiate the input and output synth. them in the in group. Sorry, put that one in the in group. And that one in the out group. Okay. All right, we got to register that as a command period object. useful if you want to remove any previous ones. Okay. Right, I think that's all we need. So I'm before we run all this, I'm just going to write down all my uh, commands here. Um, I'm not going to run them yet because we got to, you know, uh, set up everything, put everything on the server. But um, I'm going to make a record synth. We're going to use the master record synth. We need to specify a buffer. We'll use tilde b1 and put it on the record group. We're going to set our start trigger to 1, which will start recording. And then whenever we're ready, we're going to set it back to 0 by triggering the stop argument. And simultaneously, we're going to instantiate a master playback synth. We're going to use, again, tilde b1, because that's the buffer we record into. And I said I was going to do some 12 bar blues, or attempt anyway, to do some 12 bar blues. So we'll make 12 bars out of that and put it on that group. Right, and that'll start playing. And whenever I feel like it, uh, record into one of the slaves. We'll use the next buffer in line. 
put it on the record group. Start recording. Stop recording. Okay, and then um, let's see. So buffer two and I'll specify this will be um, one third of 12 bars so this will be a four bar lick and I'm gonna delay it by two triplets so a quarter note would be uh, 0.25 so uh, two thirds of that would be 0.25 times two thirds or 0.5 over 3. That's got to go on the play slave group. And just in case we want to free these. Okay, and then we'll use this line to get rid of everything because command period isn't going to work. Okay. This is loaded. Okay, I already did those, but no harm done. Uh, make our groups. Okay. Okay, so um, if we look at our node tree, I've put the groups there. And um, actually, I'm going to get rid of that command period for one second. So if I hit command period, which I just did, it kills everything. All we have is the default group. And um, now if I register that setup function, and I haven't hit command period yet, so we've still got nothing, but now I'll hit command period. And look at that. We've got our five groups. Uh, it zeroed all the buffers, and you can see we've got our input synth at the top and our output synth at the bottom. So I'm going to switch over to the line input here and attempt to do this musical demonstration. So I recorded 12 bars and then I uh, stopped recording and started playing back that master synth. And this thing will just keep going. You can see uh, we've got about uh, hovering between like 7 and 11 percent. I mean, there's a lot of unit generators going there and um, a lot of data being passed around. So, uh, right, this just goes around and around. So I'm going to um, put the guitar back up and uh, try to record this little uh, four bar lick. So I'm going to switch back over to line input here. So that was kind of lousy. Like I said, it uh, you know, performer accuracy is kind of what's going to make this work best. And I am no guitarist, but 
You can kind of hear it though. Anyway, so um, these will just go, and I've only really um, set up enough stuff here for. Uh, I, I'm only using two buffers, you know, B1 and B2, and um, you know, I, I I allocated eight, and there's nothing stopping me from allocating even more. And um, you know, you can get kind of crazy with everything. So um, yeah, and then I can just free the uh, the slave loop like with this line right here. And that goes away. And then we just got our master loop kicking around. And yeah, there you have it. So um, yeah, it's kind of kind of a long video and a lot of stuff. But hopefully the the live coding thing makes it easier to understand. You know, as, as opposed to just starting with a a document that's all finished and and just going through it. Um, I'd be interested to hear uh, your feedback. If if you prefer the live coding, if you prefer uh, something that's already sort of set up. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Uh, yeah, and this, this is just one example of synchronized looping in Super Collider. And like I said, I'm just using two buffers. Very simple example, but uh, you can definitely start modifying some arguments, you know, getting kind of crazy with it. Um, you can, uh, uh, the number of bars, the length multiplier, you know, for example, there's nothing preventing you from making a fractional number of bars or a fractional length multiplier. Who knows? You can do all sorts of stuff and you can make some interesting like phase music or, you know, all sorts of stuff. Uh, comments and questions, always welcome. You can message me or, or put a comment on the video. Uh, if you want to mess around with the code yourself, you, you can code along with the video and I'll put a link to the code in the description so you can download it if you want. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Um, any questions or thoughts, please leave them on YouTube. And uh, thanks. So I'll see you guys later.